Welcome to Explain, a series of health education programs published by the Patient Education Institute, the leading provider of interactive health education. This video includes general medical information and does not replace the medical advice of your doctor or healthcare provider. If you have questions pertaining to your medical condition, ask your doctor or healthcare provider. Warfarin. Introduction for new users. Pediatrics. Introduction. Blood clots can happen in children who have problems with their blood, blood vessels, or heart. Blood clots may be dangerous. They may lead to the loss of an arm or leg, strokes, or death. Your child's health care provider may ask your child to take a blood thinner to help prevent harmful blood clots. Warfarin is a blood thinning medicine. This program will help you and your child understand the benefits and risks of warfarin. Benefits of Warfarin After an injury, natural clotting substances in the blood cause the blood to harden and seal over the injury site. These clots help minimize blood loss. Some children can form harmful blood clots inside the blood vessels. This may happen if the child has problems with their blood, blood vessels, or heart. It may also happen after surgery. These clots can get bigger and block the flow of blood within blood vessels. They can also move within the body. This can cause harm to affected body parts. A blood clot in the arteries of the brain can stop blood flow and lead to a stroke. The symptoms of a stroke are weakness, numbness, confusion, problems speaking or understanding, vision impairment. It can also cause total paralysis and even death. A blood clot in the arteries that go to an arm or a leg can lead to severe pain coldness, or an infection called gangrene. Gangrene is an infection that happens when tissue in the body dies. Surgery may be needed to remove the infected body part. A blood clot can also stop blood flow to the legs or lungs. This may lead to leg swelling and shortness of breath or death. Children are often at a low risk of forming harmful blood clots, but children with certain medical problems and those who are on bed rest are at a higher risk. To lower the risk of harmful blood clots, your child's health care provider may ask your child to take a medicine called a blood thinner. Warfarin is a commonly prescribed blood thinner. Warfarin decreases the ability of the body to form clots. This makes it less likely that harmful blood clots will form inside the heart and blood vessels or around devices inside the body, such as mechanical heart valves. Your child's health care provider will tell you for how long your child will have to take warfarin. Risks of warfarin Like any other medicine, warfarin poses some risks. Learning about the risks can help you avoid them or detect them early if they happen. Because warfarin reduces the ability of the body to form blood clots, children on warfarin will bleed longer after an injury than those who are not on warfarin. If your child is involved in an accident while taking a blood thinner, they could lose too much blood. Even minor accidents, such as falls, can cause bleeding inside the body or brain. Severe bleeding can cause death if not treated, but this is very rare. Have your child checked right away if you notice signs of bleeding. For these reasons, your child's health care provider will give your child enough warfarin to thin their blood without thinning it too much. If the blood is not thin enough, blood clots inside the blood vessels and heart may form. If the blood is too thin, your child is at a higher risk for bleeding. Give your child the amount of warfarin your child's health care provider prescribes. You should also have your child's blood tested on a regular basis to see how thin it is. Sponsored by the Patient Education Institute. www.patient-education.com Over 5,000 videos and interactive tutorials. Taking Warfarin 
Warfarin pills come in different colors. Each color is a different dosage of warfarin. Your child's health care provider will tell you the best dose for your child and when they should take it. Children who take warfarin every day must take the pill at the same time each day. It is often taken in the evening so doses can be adjusted the same day as blood tests if needed. Your child's health care provider will start by giving your child the dose of warfarin that is expected to be the most effective. The amount of warfarin your child's health care provider gives your child may be changed if the dose is found to be too high or too low. If your child's blood is too thin, your child's health care provider will lower the dose of warfarin. If your child's blood is not thin enough, your child's health care provider will increase the dose. Your child's health care provider or nurse will take a small amount of your child's blood to check whether the dose is correct. This is called an INR test. You may hear this test called a ProTime test, PT test, PT INR test, or prothrombin test. This test tells your child's health care providers how thin or thick your child's blood is. The PT INR test. To do an INR test, a nurse or lab technician will draw about 5 milliliters, 1 teaspoon of blood from a vein in your child's arm or stick your child's finger to get a blood sample. The results of the test are often available a few hours after your child's blood is drawn or within two hours if it is needed right away. For children who are not taking any blood thinner, the INR is about 1.0. In children taking blood thinners, this value will be higher. The INR range will depend on the medical conditions your child has. Your child's health care provider will tell you the best INR range for your child. If the INR number is lower than it should be, your child's health care provider will prescribe a higher dose of warfarin. If the INR number is higher than it should be, your child's health care provider will prescribe a lower dose of warfarin. Controlling your child's INR The prescribed amount of warfarin should help keep your child's INR within acceptable limits, but illness, diet, exercise, and other medicines may affect how thin the blood is. Your child's health care provider will ask you to have your child's INR checked regularly. You can do several things to prevent sudden changes in your child's INR. This will help you keep your child's blood as thin as it should be. To keep your child's blood as thin as it should be, give your child the correct dose of warfarin prescribed by your child's health care provider always at the same time of the day. Check with your child's health care provider before your child takes any new medicines, especially over-the-counter medicines, antibiotics, vitamins, and herbal products. Talk with your child's health care provider about products that have aspirin. Do not give your child aspirin-like products such as ibuprofen, Advil, and naproxen, Aleve. For over-the-counter pain relief, talk with your child's health care provider about acetaminophen. Tell your child's health care providers about any new or unusual symptoms your child may have. You should follow your child's health care provider's instructions when giving your child warfarin. If your child misses a dose of warfarin, try to give it within 12 hours of the missed dose. Do not give them an extra pill to catch up if more than 12 hours have passed since the time they normally take it. Your child should not change their regular daily activities while taking warfarin. This way your child's dose of warfarin is less likely to change. Make sure your child's eating and exercise habits stay consistent. Eating too much food with vitamin K may lower your child's INR. For this reason, your child must keep the amount of vitamin K in their diet steady. Green vegetables have a high level of vitamin K. Some foods that are high in vitamin K are beef or pork liver, broccoli, kale, spinach, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, collard and turnip greens. If you have any questions about any other food, check the Warfarin manual or call your child's health care provider. Do not let your child change the amount of green and leafy vegetables they eat. They should eat small amounts consistently.
If your child chooses to drink V8 products, he or she should drink them on a regular basis. Grapefruit and cranberry juice should be limited to 8 ounces or less a day. Using warfarin with antibiotics may increase the risk of bleeding. Your child may need more frequent monitoring of his or her INR. The more similar your child's activities and exercising habits are each day, the less likely it is that your child's health care provider will change the amount of warfarin they take. It is important to have your child's INR checked regularly. Your child's health care provider will tell you how often your child should have this blood test done. Some people can check their INR at home. After your child's health care provider gets your child's test results from the lab, he or she will tell you whether your child should increase or decrease the amount of warfarin they take and by how much. Make sure to tell all your child's health care providers, even their dentists, that they are on warfarin, especially if your child will have any type of surgery or injection. Taking warfarin during pregnancy raises the risk of birth defects in the fetus. It can also cause excessive bleeding during delivery. If your child may be pregnant, talk with your child's health care provider. Your child should be careful while using knives. Razors and hard toothbrushes can also cause bleeding. Have them use an electric shaver and a soft toothbrush instead. Because children on warfarin are more likely to have internal bleeding, your child should not play contact sports such as boxing, football, hockey, soccer, wrestling. Check with your child's health care provider before your child starts a new exercise program or sport. It is recommended that children who are on warfarin wear a medical alert charm. This is very important in cases of medical emergencies when you are not able to communicate with your child's health care providers. When to call your child's health care provider Certain side effects of warfarin are normal, such as feeling cold and bruising more easily. Even if your child is taking the prescribed amount of warfarin, dangerous internal bleeding or blood clots can still happen. It is important to tell your child's health care provider about any signs of internal bleeding or blood clots. This section will teach you about when you should call your child's health care provider. Call your child's health care provider if your child has a serious fall or hits their head, especially if your child starts to have a headache or becomes sleepy or weak. Your child's health care provider may want to check for bleeding in the brain. If there is any blood in your child's urine, pee, or stools, bowel movement, call your child's health care provider. Blood turns urine red, pink, or tea-colored. Blood in stools can be bright red or can turn the stools dark red or black. Your child's health care provider may want to check for internal bleeding in your child's digestive or urinary systems. If you or your child notices unusual bruising, large areas of bruising, or black and blue marks on your child's skin for unknown reasons, you should tell your child's health care provider. This may mean that your child is bleeding under the skin. Small bruises after minor accidents such as a leg hitting the furniture are normal and you do not need to call your child's health care provider. Check with your child's health care provider if your child experiences dizziness, trouble breathing, chest pain or pressure, more weakness or tiredness than normal. These can be the signs of blood loss and anemia. Call your child's health care provider when there is bleeding that does not stop from a cut or from your child's nose. Call your child's health care provider if the bleeding does not stop after seven minutes. Call your child's health care provider if you notice more bleeding than usual when your child brushes or flosses their teeth. Tell your child's health care provider if your child notices more bleeding than usual when she gets her menstrual period. Also, call if your child has bleeding between periods. If your child has a high fever or an illness that seems to be getting worse, check with your child's health care provider. You should also check with your child's health care provider if your child notices any blood when they cough or vomit, if they have loose or runny stools, diarrhea, or if they have an infection with a high fever and chills. 
Check with your child's health care provider if your child has any pain or swelling in any of their joints. They could have bleeding inside the joint. Call your child's health care provider right away if your child experiences a rash, hives, itching, swallowing problems. Call your child's health care provider right away if your child experiences flu-like symptoms, such as diarrhea, loose stools, nausea, they feel like they need to vomit, vomiting, throwing up. Call your child's health care provider right away if your child has an infection, loss of appetite, pain in the upper right side of the stomach, yellowish eyes or skin. You should also call your child's health care provider if your child's hands, feet, ankles, or lower legs are swollen. If you like this video, please like and share. For similar videos, subscribe to our channel. Summary Children often have a low risk of forming harmful blood clots compared to adults, but children with certain medical problems and those who are on bed rest are at a higher risk. Warfarin is a commonly prescribed blood thinner. It helps reduce harmful blood clots in the body. Like any other medicine, warfarin poses some risks. Learning about the risks of warfarin can help your child avoid them or detect them early if they happen. Your child's health care provider will start by giving your child the dose of warfarin that he or she thinks will be most effective. The amount of warfarin your child's health care provider gives may change if the dose is found to be too high or too low. Your child's health care provider will do an INR test. This test helps them determine whether or not the dose of warfarin is right for your child. Warfarin is a relatively safe medicine if your child takes it the right way, has their INR checked regularly, keeps their eating and exercise habits steady, and talks with their health care provider when needed. Your child's health care provider may refer your child to the anticoagulation clinic. Its staff are experts who have the skills needed to monitor your child's warfarin therapy. Thank you for using Explain.